Hello humanoids, Halfling Hannah here from HalflingHobbies.com and today I'm in the Halfling Kitchen, lovingly referred to as the Tasty Tavern because I want to show you something that I've become a little bit famous for with my players and that's how to make fruit butter. This recipe works with pretty much any kind of fruit that you have a lot of that you need to get rid of. Just make sure that it's nice and ripe. So today what we're going to be using is peaches. So I love peaches. They are probably my favorite summer fruit and I just can't stand it in the winter time when I don't have any. So what I've done is I've created this recipe so that I can can my peaches and have that wonderful taste of summer all winter long. These also go great on a D&D table. It adds a little old world flair and um, special, just a little bit of specialness to your table. I love to serve these with homemade biscuits, scones, muffins, or even just bread or with a cheese platter. So this is fantastic served with some warm brie and crackers. You can really dump this butter on pretty much anything. I actually tend to kind of eat it like applesauce, which is terrible and you're gonna see why but it is absolutely delicious and so easy to make if you've never made fruit butter before and you never canned anything before you are going to be surprised how easy it is to get wonderful and delicious fruit that you can enjoy all winter long so if you're looking for a little bit of uh, tavern flair for your D&D table fruit butter and fresh bread is a perfect way to get it very, very easily. So, without further ado, let's get into how to make Halfling Hannah's famous spiced rum peach butter. Here we go!
All right, friends, let's talk spices real quick. Now I know that it is super tempting to go and get the cheapest bottle of spices that you can find, but I am telling you, rule number one of amazing tavern cooking is to use the best spices that you can find. This means that I like to use organics. I know, and you're probably like, but I do organics, um, things that are sealed really, really tightly and really, really well. You're just going to get a better flavor from these things than you will from the super cheap brands. That being said, you don't have to go super expensive for things to be delicious, but invest in good spices. This thing is really big. You only use a sprinkle on things and it makes it taste delicious. Um, honestly, one of my favorites in the entire world is Pinzi Spices. Um, I'm gonna see if maybe I can partner with them at some point, but oh, I love Pinzi Spices. So make sure that you're using good spices and word to the wise on your vanilla. This is vanilla extract. This is not artificial vanilla. Artificial vanilla tastes like dog poop. It's, it's not good. I don't like it. It's way cheaper, but it tastes way cheaper. So get vanilla extract. This is Singing Dog. It's one of my favorite brands because they support local farmers. Go local. Uh, I say it all the time on all of my stuff. Support local. So there's that. There's also this amazing honey. Another thing, raw, unfiltered honey gives you a really deep and rich and delicious honey flavor that you simply don't get with the super processed stuff that's essentially liquid sugar. Uh, this still has that delicious honey flavor that we're looking for to take our peach butter to the next level. So invest in your spices, invest in local businesses, and get some good honey. Those are my special tips for my special famous honey butter. Honey butter? Fruit butter. It's essentially honey butter. I put so much honey in it. Fruit butter. Okay, back to the montage. All right, friends, if you've never canned before, it can be a little intimidating, but it really doesn't need to be. So what you're gonna see in this next little part of the video is me prepping my cans to can. Prepping my cans to can. Ooh, noun, verb, it's fine. So the cans that I use, I just got at Walmart, I use the quarter of a pint compared to my head. Quarter of a pint. I like to use these because uh, you get a whole bunch of them. I got two flats of these. Flat is 12. So I got 24 of these and um, I'm actually <laughs> gonna need more. Uh, but I like to get these small ones so that I can share. These are a lot easier to share with people. This isn't as intimidating to them to try as a giant jar. These also fit perfectly on platters and trays and you can spread them out on your D&D table without taking up a whole bunch of room or standing up too tall or anything like that. These also make the perfect little serving cups. So I use those. You're going to want to boil them. Don't just wash and think that that's good. When you can things, it has to be really, really, really sterile or it's going to start growing mold in your cabinet and when you open it up, you're gonna be super disappointed that your delicious peach butter has turned to moldy petri dish mush. It's very sad, don't let it happen. Also, if you wash them with soap and water, you have the possibility of not getting all the soap out. And then your delicious peach butter is tainted by the taste of Dawn, which just, just isn't pleasant. Just don't like it. 
So instead of washing in soap and water, boil them and boil them really well. It is better to overboil them than it is to have mold in your jelly. So, word to the wise though, make sure that your jars are at room temperature and that you haven't let them sit in a cold car or anything like that to where they're really cold. Because if you put cold glass into hot liquid, they explode. And it's really, really bad. Um, so don't do that. Okay? Okay. Now we're gonna can. So here's what you need. I'm going to be using my Instant Pot my best friend. I'm gonna be using my instant pot. You can also use a canning pot. So it's like a stock pot and it has a ceiling lid and a little valve on it and then you put weight on it. That's what I used to use with my grandma all the time. It works great too. If you have one of those, use one of those. Or another option, if the whole pot thing intimidates you, you can actually get a vacuum sealer now that has an attachment that goes over the top of these jars that goes over the top of these jars and seals them without having to use heat or boiling water or anything super intimidating like that you can just put it over the top it sucks all the air out creates that vacuum pops the top and there you have it. You have canned goods and you didn't have to mess with an Instant Pot or Stock Pot or anything like that. You're getting a great shot of all the stuff I have in my kitchen. I hope you enjoy that too. Okay, on to the canning process. Don't let it intimidate you. You can do this. You're a fantastic tavern owner. You got this. Okay, bye. Okay, so if it's your first time making fruit butter, you may be wondering, how do I know when it's done? Because it is technically cooked, it is done at any point. But a fruit butter is recognized because it's nice and thick. So if you look here at my delicious butter, what you want is when you stick a spoon in it, you want it to mound up like that so you can get a nice big chunk on there and then it should drip off in chunks. It should not be runny. Another great way to tell if it's done is if you stick the back of your spoon in there and it coats the whole back of the spoon and then you run your finger or spatula across the back and it stays. What I mean by stays is that the line stays. Mm, so yummy. You see how that line stays there even when I tilt the spoon? This this is thick enough to make that line stay. That's how you know when your fruit butter is done. That is perfect. Oh my god. It's so good. Guys, I'm not kidding. It's so good. You have to try this. Okay, back to the montage. <laughs> 